to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. A local church held a special Sunday service for flood victims staying at the Car Creek Campgrounds. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox details how the church is giving back to flood victims. Almost two months since the flood, leaves are starting to hit the ground as a slight breeze at Car Creek, hence fall has arrived. Summit Community Church held a service for flood victims staying at the park, bringing some joy to a cloudy day and season of life for survivors. Thankfully, a lot of people from, uh, from the church came today, and a lot of people that were staying here came, and were able to get food, and we tried to help people, and, and that sort of thing. Church groups from outside of the area have also joined in the mission. We wanted to come down and help them with the effort and love our state and love the folks and meet any needs we, we can and, and try to help come alongside them in that effort. So, Their effort got tougher when rain started to pour down, starting a rush to get everyone under some form of cover with their food. As the church delivered goods with rain-soaked clothes, survivors and trailers appreciated the support even more. You know, for people to come to us and to, you know, bring a sense of normalcy to us, that's just a great feeling, you know, that people find us important and that they want to put forth that effort for us. Nobody that has been in the area since mid-July is a stranger to rain, so Pastor Combs called it just one more obstacle to overcome. You know, we had it planned to come and do an outdoor service and things, and so when it rains, uh, like we've experienced the past two months, you have to just be where you are and serve however you can. Serving in the sunshine and storms. In Car Creek, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Flood survivors at Car Creek Campgrounds are thankful for what churches have done to help them recover. One of Knott County's biggest events will be kicking off next Sunday, but this year event organizers are working to do more than just offer event attendees an escape from post flood life. This year's fall Knott County horse trail ride will be used as a fundraiser for flood relief. Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson says funds made from the event will go to the Knott, Co Knott County Long Term Recovery Group to help rebuild the county. We had a great team that's came together to uh, create a long-term recovery group here in the county. So uh, uh, we felt that was the uh, best way to handle things and, and encourage people. And, you know, we want to give people hope, give them a little encouragement, and uh, hopefully this will be able to take some, some of the thoughts off of people's minds from the flood. Dobson adds that flood victims who are living on the campground will get to attend the trail ride festivities for free. You can hear more about the fall horse trail ride tonight at 11. Corbin police are asking for your help in locating a missing woman. Police say 37 year old Heather Bruner was last seen at the depot restaurant in Corbin. She was reportedly being escorted by Michael Creech. If anyone has information on Bruner's whereabouts, you're asked to contact the Corbin Police Department. Their number is on our website. One person is dead and another is facing charges after an early morning shooting in Lexington. When police arrived, they found a man with gunshot wounds. According to police, the victim died at the scene. This is the 37th homicide in Lexington for 2022, which ties the record set last year in 2021. Police arrested 29-year-old Woody LaPierre in connection to the shooting. He's charged with murder. The victim's name has not been released. Well, the forecast tonight, a little bit soggy in some places, some others not too bad. Let's go to the last six hour satellite radar loop. We've had some pretty strong storms roll through the region, but they are on their way out now. So that's a good sign there. Hopefully we'll see clearing skies as that cold front continues this trek through the region. We're still seeing a few pop up showers and storms into parts of Letcher and Pike counties going through parts of southwest Virginia, but all severe thunderstorm warnings expired at six o'clock. So we're in good shape there. UVA wise, you can still see some rain over that. That way on the uh, lens there and we're still seeing temperatures in the low 60s out there visibility not too bad and dew points in the 50s so it's not really much of a change with temperatures it's, and dew points it's just the change as the front goes by but you see some warmer air still in place back up into central Kentucky Irvin at 76 but 61 and Wise and Jonesville 72 London 75 hazard 72 Pikeville across the state and region still some 80s out to the west those will be a thing of the past pretty quickly first alert weather app we will see again clearing skies as we head deeper into the nighttime hours, and it should be a chilly overnight heading into tomorrow morning. Keaton? Feels like I'm back on mornings. It's good to have you here, Brandon. A Louisville mother riding to raise awareness about the dangers of fentanyl. 
Julie Hoffman's son lost her son two years ago when he took a fentanyl laced pill. Yesterday she got on her horse in his memory. As Julie Hoffman rides her horse Hugo. He was a good boy. The memories come flooding back. I feel his strength. Just something happened to me after why I died. I was like, no, I'm going to be strong. Strong enough to clear the hurdles. Strong enough to wear her son Wyatt's favorite color. And strong enough to tell his story. I'm trying to, I'm trying to save other people from going through what we're going through. On April 5th, 2020, her 23-year-old son, an aspiring model, took a pill he thought was Xanax, not knowing there was fentanyl inside. Hoffman's calls it poison. He didn't overdose. He didn't take a handful of pills. He wasn't trying to do anything wrong. He just took a Xanax that he thought was a Xanax, and it had fentanyl in it. And um, it took his life. Since her son's death, Hoffman's has become an advocate for him and for the thousands of others like him. Research from the CDC shows more than 107,000 people in the United States died of drug overdoses or poisonings in 2021. 67% of those involve drugs like fentanyl. But, For Hoffman's, the latest trip in her advocacy journey takes her here to Brownsboro Farm in Crestwood, riding in the Pace event, sponsoring Jump 9, called Wyatt's Stories Jump. Because while fentanyl may have ended his life, Hoffman's says it's not the end of her son's story. Other people said, oh, geez, I, do you think it's sort of like you're making Wyatt look bad or, oh, it's just such a tough subject. It's really not. It happened to my family. It happened to Wyatt. So to me, if I'm upholding Wyatt and I'm saying, don't let this happen to you, to your family, I think Wyatt would be proud. I really do. Hoffman says her goal is to get into schools and share Wyatt's story with children. That way she can make a difference in their lives before they make a deadly mistake. A water main break in July dumped more than 2 million gallons of water into a Lexington church. Two large generators are powering everything in the church for Sunday service after the water took out the building's electric, including the air conditioning. Churchgoers, churchgoers say the water, which got up to 10 feet high in the basement, destroyed what was an important part of the church's community. We did everything down there. People used it for weddings and even people would uh, use it for for baby showers. This was our old kitchen. I mean our new kitchen. It's now the old one I guess. Everything's gone. We had just remodeled. Put in everything new so it's all gone. As they work towards repairing their basement, the members of Rosemont Baptist Church say they're stronger after the flooding with more people saying they want to get involved and help. A vehicle that was stolen late last month and belonged to a state representative has been recovered. Sherilyn Stevenson says the car was found Thursday afternoon at an apartment complex near Fayette Mall in Lexington. Someone at the complex noticed the car had been parked there for weeks without any interaction and they called police. Stevenson said the car had no visible damage and most of the valuables inside were left behind. This week marks Electric Vehicle Week across the nation and electric vehicle enthusiasts are partnering up to show their community the benefits of electric vehicles. In addition, the state just got a new grant to add more charging stations, which could give people, give more people the idea to switch. Today, people came out to Lexington to learn more about the driving green in all different shapes and sizes. So the benefits are, you know, you've got your low cost of maintenance. Um, you're not putting uh, emissions into the air. Uh, electricity is a heck of a lot cheaper than gasoline. Uh, we can drive for like two cents a mile where it might cost uh, and someone driving a, a regular car, maybe 20 or 25 cents a mile. The hope is with the new grant money, more folks will start driving electric. There are more than 70 electric vehicles on hand, as well as the owners to answer questions and speak with event goers. Kentucky's mammoth caves are known for their impressive size, and this weekend they're known for the Mammothon. The Mammoth Cave Triathlon kicked off today. This was the seventh Mammothon. Participants walk through the historic cave system, walk or run the park's trails, then bike all the way to Cave City and back. Though competition was certainly not discouraged, the event was more centered on having fun than racing. What people really like about it is the unique part of walking through the historic cave. Yeah, there's not another event. I'm pretty sure they're right on that one that does a cave and a hike, but the hike is really cool. 
After the event was canceled in the past due to COVID, more than 100 participants signed up for this year's Mammothon, making it the biggest one yet. Coming up at 6, the way medical debt gets reported on your credit report has changed, which could potentially be big for folks who are burdened by medical debt. After a few strong storms tonight, which are basically out of the way, or out moving out of the region right now, we are smooth sailing through most of this week until the weekend. I'll have more on what we're watching in just a few minutes.